Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this fourth Sunday in Advent. I appreciate you being here. We've got a big week ahead of us with our uh, Christmas celebration. Uh, If you've had a chance to register for worship on Christmas Eve, thank you for doing that. That's helped us uh, anticipate how many will be here and ensure we're balancing those services out. Uh, We do still have room at our 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. worship services. All of our earlier worship services are full. Um, But please take a moment to register those if you plan on coming. If you're planning on watching at home on the live stream, that will be made available as well. Uh, If you did happen to sign up, uh, again, thank you for doing that because it allowed us to add a service. But also, please, uh, if you're sick, stay home by all means. But if if you're well, uh, try to honor that time that you signed up for. Know that many have adjusted their normal Christmas Eve routines in order to to worship at a time that may not be their time of preference. But... Uh, They want to come and gather at the manger once again this year. So thank you for that. Let's rise and sing, and we light the love candle today. Please be seated. We give praise to you, O God, for this Advent wreath that helps us count the days of preparation for Christ's coming again. As we light the fourth candle, wake us from the sleep of our sinful nature, that we may be ready at all times to welcome our Lord when he comes again. Give us the light of your grace, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may prepare our hearts to welcome him with love. We ask this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain. Amen.
Good morning, girls and boys. I'm so glad to be with you in worship today. Hey, I hope you've been keeping up with our Christmas tree decoration on my Advent calendar. You might be able to notice, even from where you are, that the tree has a lot of decorations on it. That means we're getting really close to Christmas. I've taken out all of these days. I've taken out all of these days. Now I'm about halfway through my bottom row. That is very exciting. That means that Christmas is just around the corner. Recently, we remembered that God put a star in the sky. Very special event. Something very important is happening. Jesus is born. Then we heard that the wise men from a long ways away, that they saw the star and they wondered what it meant. I've got my camel over here on my Christmas tree that reminded me that they were so interested to find out what happened that they decided to walk a long, long way, travel so far to see this newborn king. I've got my wise man actually right here. He's got a special gift in his hand. He, they brought special gifts like gold and frankincense and myrrh. Let's find out what today's all about. Oh, interesting. My little card for December the 20th says, Later, Mary and Joseph had to take the baby Jesus to Egypt because the evil King Herod wanted to kill him. Well, that's not a very fun thing to remember, but it is true that the evil King Herod did not like the idea of another king being born. So Mary and Joseph had to run away and take Jesus with them. My ornament for today is a crown, but it's not a cool looking crown or a pretty crown, it's an ugly crown to remind us of that wicked King Herod. He did not like the idea that another king was going to be born. Sometimes I feel bad for Mary and Joseph. They had a rough, they had a rough few weeks there. They had to travel to Bethlehem, gave birth to a little baby where animals were supposed to be, and now they've got a king chasing after them. Probably good for us to remember, though, because it's true, and also to remember how good of a king Jesus is. Would you please fold your hands, bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for being my king. Help me follow you always. Amen. Please rise. We proclaim this is the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is Jesus. out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our, Our God, God shall come. He does not keep silence. So prepare the way of the Lord. Make, Make his paths straight. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let, let the, the earth, earth open, open that, that salvation may sprout forth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
seated. The Old Testament reading appointed for this fourth Sunday in Advent comes from the prophet Samuel, the second book, seventh chapter. Now when the king lived in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all the places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be dispersed, disturbed no more." And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord.
Our epistle reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 16th chapter. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed through the prophetic writings and has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him to the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. He shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Full disclosure, I did not wake up yesterday morning planning to preach this weekend. My field worker, Connor, is under the weather and out of caution, decided to stay home. Uh, for me, writing a sermon on Saturday is not unusual. That's my typical routine of how I do it, so I'm, I'm not asking for any kind of uh, pity about the whole thing. But before sitting down to write, it occurred to me that maybe I could look back and look at some sermons from years past. And I found something I thought was kind of interesting. I was reminded that three years ago this weekend, so the fourth weekend of Advent, three years ago. The reason I was looking three years ago, if you don't know, our readings are on a three-year cycle. So they come back every three years. I found that three years ago, the fourth weekend of Advent was only one day long because the 24th was Sunday. So on Saturday night, we celebrated the fourth weekend of Advent. I preached that night. Then the next day, we celebrated solely as Christmas Eve. And I thought to myself, self, here you have a sermon that has only been preached one time. It spent three years dying to be heard by more people, and here is your chance. And so I did the quick math, and I realized that only... 150 people heard it the first time. Only 12 of those people are in the house today. And uh, of you 12, only two of you have the kind of memory where you might be able to recall this from three years ago. So you can disagree with me later, but shame on you for lying to me inside God's house. So anyhow, here we go. Um, the calendar offers us this odd thing in the season of Advent. The fourth week of Advent always ends too soon. As you heard me say three years ago, it was only one day long that that love candle burned by itself or as the candle of the week. Because when Christmas Eve arrives, we'll light the Christ candle. At the beginning of the season, the hope candle was lit, burned by itself for a week. Then there was hope and peace together for a whole week. Anytime we were gathered here inside of God's house, maybe gathered around the table inside your house. Then the candle of joy was lit and joined the wreath, but now the candle of love only gets a handful of days of being the candle before the Christ candles added to it. Poor love, you might think. At a time when more love could be oh so useful in the world, and we're left by the liturgical calendar 
with less. In our gospel reading for this morning, we find ourselves in one of the most unusual moments of all time. An angel has arrived to speak with a very young woman named Mary. Mary, as you know, is not yet married, but the time is coming soon. And suddenly she is met by an angelic messenger of God named Gabriel. And he tells her this amazing thing, that even before she becomes Joseph's wife, she'll be pregnant, and the child that she'll carry will be the Son of God. You and I know, of course, what Mary can't. We know the details of God's plan. We know that in this moment is great honor, even if it does come with the tragedy of losing your son too early. We know that days of being mocked and teased will be way outweighed by days of honor in time, because it is a special kind of honor to be the mother of God. But she didn't know, couldn't know yet what was to be. The thoughts that were likely to roll through her mind were of the impending and terribly difficult conversation with Joseph, who was very likely to, and without angelic visitation himself, would have broken the engagement. How would she tell her parents? How would she convince her parents? I have no doubt she wondered, no doubt she cried and prayed and struggled at times over the next months. I assume those things to be true, because they would be reasonable responses. But with all that we might assume to be true of Mary, I want to take a moment to simply see what the text says is true of her. And though this moment, the annunciation of a virgin pregnancy, the annunciation of the arrival of God in the flesh, the annunciation of the beginning of the unfolding of the plan of God, though this moment is unique, Though it is truly unique, there is also something here generally true enough to be learned by you, to be learned by me. Not just to watch as it happens to Mary, but to treasure it up in our hearts as well. After the angel speaks, after Mary asks and he answers, she says these famous words from her lips, but words that could also be known, should also be known, to come from your mouth as well. She says in response to all that the angel has said to her this, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. I am the servant of the Lord, she said. Let it be to me according to your word. A short week of love. That's what we get this year, most years. So let's make the most of it. First, I want you to know what it sometimes means to be loved by God. Sometimes the love of God, it comes to you when you least expect it. Mary was likely not kneeling next to her bed saying bedtime prayers, asking God to use her in some important fashion. Not that she wasn't willing, just that sometimes the word of God comes to us when we least expect it. So being loved by God means for us a level of readiness being on call for the word of the Lord to come to us, to call us into action. That's a challenge, I know, because sometimes we walk into the world wanting the world to want to be loved the way that we want to offer love. But life doesn't always work that way. Sometimes we have to be ready and aware and attempting to see the world through God's eyes, attempting to hear conversations as if they were prayers to God for help, and trusting that maybe you and I might be God's answer to their cry. Connected to that, of being aware and being ready, one of the things this moment with the angel Gabriel and Mary can remind us is that love does not always lead us someplace we want to go. Not sort of doubt in the first century that wedding planning is quite what it can be now, but Mary, she had plans. She had ideas of how this was going to go. And I can promise you that being pregnant now was not part of it. It wasn't comfortable, didn't always feel safe, caused heartache, forced her to hear snide and nasty comments, and yet she walks into it with faith. Her response to this message of love from God, 
that came at a very unusual time and called her to a very uncomfortable path, her response was, I'm the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. That's what God's love does to us sometimes. Comes unexpected, unannounced, and calls us to something uncomfortable. And this is how we're supposed to respond. Okay? I'm not sure exactly how this is going to play out, but I'm willing to walk the path you've placed before me. I'm willing to trust in you. You see, there are times when we think faith means that life should work out the way we thought it would. But that's not faith. That's an attempt to control. Sometimes the crazy of life comes to us and we think, why would this happen to me? I love God and I'm a person of faith. But what love does, what faith actually is, is the ability to walk into a future that is unknown to you and to me, trusting that God knows it and is walking with us. The love of God and our response in faith, it doesn't mean the removal of hardship and pain from our lives. It provides us a path to live through and walk through it. And that, of course, should be no surprise. Because as you and I light the candle of love today, we stand just days away from the candle of Christ. And his life, it reshapes love for us. Because for Jesus, love wasn't easy, wasn't soothing, wasn't cuddly or warm. For Jesus, love is sacrifice, commitment, and the prayer before the cross, not my will, but your will, Father, be done. That's how loved you are, that the Lord of all would die for your life and promise that one day he'll carry you into his forever. The days ahead, they, they could be uncomfortable. The days ahead could be unexpected. Well, unexpected by us. But in spite of our fears, in spite of our doubts, in spite of our struggles, we know that we have been loved by God. And as he calls out to us, in faith we're supposed to respond in love to him for the good of our neighbor, the good of our world. Love is reshaped today by Jesus. And so are we. We are reshaped for life in this world. Have faith that as we walk into an unknown future that God God walks with us. And really, you can light that one candle of love any day you want. Or better yet, any day your neighbor needs. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
for the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For Hannah and Duane, for Ruth and Mark and Doris, that you may continue to sustain and uphold your people by your grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the birth of a new child to John and Chelsea, for the anniversaries of Jason and Jamie and Scott and Carla, that you would continue to bless these and all marriages and all children in our midst, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this Christmas season, that you would turn the hearts and minds of your people into steadfast contemplation of your birth in Bethlehem so long ago. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for these and for all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.